Panda. Okay, no problem. I've got to do all SEO trends for all different skill levels of SEO in 20 minutes, and I've got 40 minutes worth of content. So put your fast ears on. Here we go. Okay, for some of you, you're actually thinking, I thought we were pretty sure that SEO is dead. Isn't SEO not a thing anymore? You probably have seen slides like SEO, SEO is dead, social drives way more traffic with some pretty charts. You've probably seen like, no, Bing is actually the new thing. It's totally gaining ground on Google now. Google's losing it. Facebook sends so much more charts. All these charts are real charts we've pulled. So that whole SEO is dead, I have sympathy for you. I know why you feel that way. But a lot of this data, we can't trust. It comes from social plugins, for example. Well, yeah, you think social plugins are going to report that there's a lot of social traffic? So we use different data. We like to use clickstream data. Clickstream data from a company we partner with called Jumpshot actually records user behavior, millions of users' behavior. So it's much less biased by a particular agency's customer set, which could be highly verticalized. And it's not biased by particular JavaScript plugins. And this data allows us to get a much clearer picture of where people are actually searching today. And the data shows us Google is king, guys. It's not even close. This is 90% of search searches happen on Google. This includes Google Images, traditional Google. It includes YouTube. See, these are all Google properties. Look at that. So there's a lot of hysteria around Amazon searches, for example. Amazon product search is real. That's a real phenomenon. But of the overall search pie, everyone else is teensy tiny. Some of you are thinking, well, Sarah, this data is probably old. And it's probably way off trend. I looked at that too. I looked at the two. This chart shows over time how search volumes are changing and where are users actually searching using clickstream data. And as you can see, it's remarkably steady. There is no meaningful threat to Google out there, folks. In fact, the number of Google searches continues to increase, and we know they're increasingly mobile. I'm shifting gears a little bit for you. We were just talking about where are people actually searching? Where do you and I search? Now we're shifting gears to where do these platforms send traffic? Where are they sending traffic and how much are they sending? Google is still sending the majority of traffic by far compared to these other platforms. So if you're a marketer out there, you should be deeply curious, who's gonna send me the most traffic? It's definitely Google, guys. Now this slide, I'm gonna pause a moment on because I want you to get this takeaway. And it's a little bit of a confusing graph. So imagine if you, spread, you cut the web up into top 100 websites, 100 to 500 websites to 1,000, and you get these chunks of the most important websites all the way down to where most of us live in the long tail, right? And if those of you who have a top 100, or sorry, top 10, that's that bright pink, God bless you. This presentation may not be for you because you're winning on all platforms already anyway. For the rest of us, who live somewhere further down, maybe in the top 100 to 1,000, 100 to 10,000, or that 10,000 plus, that long tail. What this shows us is that Google is the most democratic distributor of traffic. So if you're a top 10, top 100 website, yeah, Facebook, Yahoo, YouTube, absolutely go for it. And for the rest of us, Google is your best opportunity to get traffic. So SEO is not dead, and in fact, it still reigns supreme. What we know from the clickstream data is that about three-ish percent of clicks go to paid advertising. And then conversely, 62%-ish go to SEO and all SEO influence categories. 35%, there's no clicks at all. No clicks on a, on a search. We're gonna talk about why that is. You're thinking, oh, Sarah, but I heard it's mobile. Mobile's killing it, right? So here's on mobile. 2% of clerks, clicks go to AdWords, 40% of clicks going to search. 57, no click, no click. That's fine, we're gonna talk about why. So overall, if you're using clicks as the measure of value, that's traffic to your site, they're clicking and they're going traffic to your site, organic drives 20 times more traffic than paid search, 20 times, holy moly. And here's the agony and the opportunity of SEO, because there's all of this incredible traffic being driven by search, but where does all the spend go? The spend goes to AdWords, right? You all have gigantic AdWords budgets, I bet. You're hooked. You're hooked on your AdWords. 
So all of your spend, enough spend that they can build motherfucking self-driving cars on all your paid advertising budget, okay? Just that kind of blows your mind. It should blow your mind, right? That's what you should be doing right now. So why is it? Why is it? I'm gonna use some metaphors here to kind of shift your thinking. I like to think of paid advertising as a hamster wheel. It's easy to get that thing to go around and it's fun to do it. Look at that little hamster go. The moment the hamster stops, the wheel stops. Whereas SEO is like a flywheel, which is exhausting. It is heavy. It is hard to get started. You're grunting. You think about giving up and you're almost gonna give up. And then you go around and you do it again until you start to get your own momentum and it becomes more self-perpetuating. You could also think about paid advertising as day trading and perhaps SEO as the harder but miracle of compound interest 401k, right? You can think about paid ads as hiring an army to protect your village from the oncoming hordes versus SEO as building a fortress, right? The army's gonna help you out this summer and you're fine, but you gotta pay them again next summer when the hordes come back. Building your fortress is gonna take a really long time, but it's gonna create multi-generational value for your village. Okay, I was being a little cheeky on purpose there because I'm trying to, I made it sound like, oh, you should all stop spending money on AdWords, which I don't believe, of course not, right? The real answer is why not both? And every good campaign, every good marketer is going to think about when you use one versus the other. But I did really want to try to hit it home for you how different these approaches are and how undervalued SEO is by all of us. And these numbers clearly show it. Okay, so why don't we invest more in organic search? Well, because Google changes all the time. In fact, I think we're in a golden age of search, a golden age of change and innovation. We're gonna talk about this. I've summarized it down to two trends, even though it's actually like a bazillion trends, but we're gonna look at these two together. The first one is this idea of mobile first. What does it really mean to be mobile first? The second one is how Google is changing from a gateway to a destination. So, to do this, I'm going to be your art teacher, right? I'm going to try to help you look at the SERP in a different way than perhaps you have looked at before. Because like a, a lot of us, we see, uh, we see a great piece of modern art and we're like, I don't really get it. And then you spend 90 minutes with a passionate art instructor and you're like, I totally get it, I'm moved by it. Okay, I'm gonna try to do that for you with a search engine result page. Yeah, no pressure. In ye olden times. <laughs> It was super simple, 10 blue links on a page. Look at that, all text. You could easily count them and so you get this notion of rankings, right? There's the first one, the second one, the third one. That was olden times. Now let's compare to a typical search. This is a search for the word organic, which could have lots of meaning. Notice the colors, notice the boxiness, notice the pictures, notice the maps and the pins, right? It looks completely different. It's radically changed. And you've also noticed probably how much more interactive it is. It's no longer, oh, just go to this, click on this one link and then go to a website about it. There's whole interactive experiences, in this case, one about cardiac arrest that has multi tabs in it on a beautiful, colorful box to the right hand side, right? Far out. And it should look very familiar. This is a similar version, but on a mobile phone. So this is an example of what mobile first design looks like on a search engine result page. And you should notice lots of boxes, lots of colors, lots of interactivity. That interactivity itself is an example of Google not sending you to a different web property, but keeping you there, becoming the destination. And that's a part of that. Why, Sarah, do so many of those searches not result in clicks? Because we're getting what we need right there on the page. Another phenomenon that you're seeing that's related to that no clicks comment is that search has become ambient. It's all around us. It's always on. It has many different formats. It's no longer 10 blue links on a page. It's voice. It's not just voice initiated. It's voice responded. It's happening in our cars. It's happening on our wrists. It's happening everywhere. So the format of what it means to even do SEO totally should, should be blowing your mind. SEO has leapt off the desktop page. It is everywhere. Speaking of that, a lot of people say voice is killing SEO. Guess what? Voice is SEO. What do you think drives voice? It's SEO. So here's an example of what you might do if you're searching for cardiac arrest. And then if you were to ask Google, okay, Google, what causes a heart attack? And it's going to have those exact same responses. It's going to list the same thing there. So whatever is ranking on position zero, position one is going to show up in your voice results. This is going to be critical for the future. I want you to make a connection between organic SEO and voice for all of your future 
optimizations. I also want to talk briefly, because we, got, we still got a lot of work to do here, about the, how interactive the search is becoming. This is an example of a hotel that allows you to book and then also does comparative price shopping right there. So think about that as a brand affiliation that is happening subconsciously, whether you mean it or not, right? Google thinks if you search for this one, you may be interested in this one. Notice the prominence of rankings, I'm sorry, uh, reviews and stars. That's organically influenced as well. That's also obviously experience influenced. Um, you can see different photos highlighted. So this speaks to how quality imagery is so important in today's search results. There are new formats, like this is post. Has anyone tried post yet? This is incredible, right there. Good, 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 good. So right there in your um, knowledge panel about your business, you can have these ephemeral sort of short-lived seven days posts that's right there in the search result if you take advantage of it. You can do scheduling. There's also a new phenomenon where Google is blending this notion of paid and organic experiences. I'm curious what the FTC will say about this in the future. I bought a 100-year-old house that has lots of plumbing issues, so I have to search for Seattle plumbers, unfortunately. And it guides me through this very specific experience for plumbers who can meet my needs, and then shows me various reviews about them and images about them. So it's a whole merging of paid and organic experiences. We're gonna see more of this in the future. Shopping carousels have gotten much more interactive with multi-tabs and they have filtering. This is, you can filter for under $500, 15 inch laptop. That is all data that is driven by content on your site and reviews that will allow Google to do this interactive filtering, right? List, oh my gosh. Places, that's a whole new complete experience. Google doesn't just send you to every individual travel site anymore. They built their own sort of, I wanna to go to Chicago and they've already picked out what they think the most popular Chicago experiences is, added reviews, taken some, of the, taken some of the best photography, put it right there for you. Jobs, another total disruption. So you can see Google has designed everything in this boxy multi-format design and they're trying to keep you on their site. It's not just pass off anymore. So what does this mean? First, it means that your technical SEO really still matters. Being mobile friendly is a huge part of being mobile first. They're not exactly identical, but if your site isn't already responsive, if you have a different mobile version of your site or your site isn't mobile ready at all, you gotta get that taken care of right away. There's ongoing mobile first index rollouts coming right now where Google says, because they know most of their searches are mobile, they're going to give priority to the mobile version of your site. It's no longer that the desktop version of your site is considered the primary one that they're gonna crawl and serve, it's your mobile version. So do a little check, think internally, is my mobile site a true reflection of all of my best content? That's important to get straightened out right away. You've gotta be really, really fast. If you have a mobile version of your site, it better be fast. Use your schema markup, all of the structured data that goes into making these interactive lists and your knowledge panels and understanding the fat graph, that is all coming from your structured data, your schema markup. Meta descriptions, still important. They're old but true, right? It's about how you get, what, what is the right thing to get someone to click right there on your link. Your title tag, similar. You've got to think about this as conversion rate optimization on the search page. Just like you think about conversion rate optimization on your website, right there on search. Make sure your business data is right. So map search is huge. There's so much searching going on right there in maps. And if your business data is wrong, if it has the wrong hours, it has the wrong address, has the wrong phone number, that's a heartbreak. That's a heartbreak and Google will start to, over time, if that information is inaccurate, they will not surface you in the map results. Progressive web apps, I'm a huge believer in progressive web apps. I think it gives you the interactive experience that you want from an application, but allows you to run them in a way that is much more search friendly and secure, has higher conversion and retention rates. That's a little more advanced. For those of you who haven't done it yet, make sure your website is secure, has to be secure. Okay, the second thing I wanna talk about in order to dominate in these new trends, unique relevant content, EAT, expertise, authority, Trust. These are Google's quality rater guidelines, and there is a ton of updates related to these rolling out in the Google search algorithm right now. We've seen a lot of volatility in rankings uh, that for sites that really need high EAT. And those sites typically fall into the bucket of YM, bucket of YMYL, your money or your life sites. 
So if you run a website or a business that is involved in um, financial advice, absolutely health advice, legal advice, things where if you're giving bad advice, you could really screw up someone's life. Google recognizes that that needs a higher scrutiny of standard to even surface in the web rankings. And so they've been tweaking the algorithm heavily in these last several months to make sure that you are authoritative, that you have real expertise and you have trust. So you have to hire experts who have education in that field. They have to be authoritative and that they have to have citations from all the right places. They have to have trust from users, right? So there's a lot of volatility here and uh, we're gonna talk more about that as we go here. Answer questions, this is a big phenomenon. So what are we doing in all of our voice initiated searches? We're asking questions, these long tail conversational questions. Google is surfacing answers. They love to answer your question and we are addicted to asking them. We call that position zero. So when you're thinking about what content should I write, think about phrasing it in the form of what question am I answering? Featured snippets dominate mobile too. Look, if you, if you have a position zero answer and it's on mobile, it takes up the whole screen, place, screen space. So you definitely want to make sure you're owning those featured snippets if you can. And featured snippets are, it is SEO. How do you get position zero? You do it through great SEO. That doesn't mean you need to be ranking number one. This is a graph that shows you, yes, if you are ranking number one organically, you're most likely to also get that featured snippet position zero. But look, it is possible to be ranking position four and still own that position zero. And why is that? It's because Google, when it's trying to design these featured snippets like this one, this is a featured snippet on what is the inverted pyramid style. They're answering your question. They chose this one because the person who wrote it was using the inverted pyramid style, which is answering the most basic and informative pieces of the question first. It's a style that reporters use. So your writing style will impact whether or not you own that featured snippet compared to perhaps more poetic and lingering and longer long form content. Another thing, Google loves lists. I love lists. Google loves a list. Write your answer in the form of a list. How to write a good title tag is a search that Moz is ranking in this position zero for, and we got it from writing an article in the form of a list. So use your list. If you are curious about, I don't know what kind of questions to ask Sarah, here's a free tool we have. There's also a paid version of it, Keyword Explorer. It'll help you understand what topics are out there, how they're related, whether they're hard to rank for or not. It will also make uh, suggestions specifically um, display suggestions that are in the form of a question. Like this is one for cheese plates and a suggestion is how to arrange a cheese platter. That's a question a lot of us have. And it's a great search here. Someone wrote an article in this case, it was Food Network wrote an article and they did it in list form and they got that position zero. Another great free tool is called Answer the Public. It will help you think of related questions to ask that you can answer to help you win those coveted position zero spots. Another trend that's coming together is what I'm calling Franken snippets. I made that up. And it's when Google sees some content from here and some content from here, and it actually blends it all together to give a completely unique um, content answer right there on the top. Build your authority. I told, mentioned you before, there's a lot of fluctuation. Make sure that your content is in the hands of other experts that they're linking towards you. Get help with our link explorer to understand who's linking to your competitors and what links you have that could be hurting you or helping you. Don't forget that links can hurt you as well if you've got some toxic links. The final thing I wanna shift your brain on is that SEO is no longer just about clicks. I talked about it's 20X clicks and paid, that's true. But remember, that's a floor of value. That is not the ceiling of the value you are getting from SEO anymore. All of these no clicks and interactions and photos, what is that closer to? Good old fashioned brand building, good old fashioned brand building and enterprise value. So think of Google as your first impression. For example, just glancing, art teacher moment, glancing at this page, right? Wow, the beautiful photos, you've got the stars, you're affiliated with other brands that are listed there. So you gotta get those reviews, manage them, experiment with Q&A. Again, you can ask and answer questions right there in the search result. That is a huge branding opportunity, customer experience opportunity. Do not waste it. Use eye-catching videos 
and images. I'm really bullish on the future of visual search. I don't think that we all need to start optimizing for Google Lens next year. Maybe that'll be on my Google Trends 2020 talk, but I wouldn't worry about it this year. But right now, it is part of that experience and the impression you are creating. Okay, I've dropped tons of knowledge, and some of you are like, this is boring, I'm an expert SEO. And some of you are like, oh my god, we've got so much work to do, we're screwed. So I want to leave you with an SEO maturity model that you can find on the Moz blog that takes you through how advanced are we on several different aspects, technical aspects of SEO. I encourage you to work on it with your teams individually. Have everyone fill it out. How do you think we're doing on technical SEO? Which stage? Are we in the chaos stage? Are we in the tactical stage, the strategic stage, and then come together and discuss it? Make sure you invite your web developers, your UX people. This is a very detailed spreadsheet. We can stop here a minute and read it. No, I don't have time to. But this is the, this is the spreadsheet you can download on the Moz blog that I encourage you to go to. So search for SEO maturity model Moz, and you will come to this blog post. I didn't create it. Heather Fiziot created it from VML. She's outstanding. She relied on a lot of industry experts to do it. This will be a tool to help you get from where you are to where you want to be. Don't forget, SEO is a competitive sport. Google has changed a lot. You got to keep up with it. And your competitors are also changing right now. So it is not set it and forget it. Keep on top of it. Today, we talked about Google Trends to Watch, mobile first, Google moving from a gateway to a destination. We talked about building your moat, hiring your army, doing both, building your foundation, creating unique content. Remember, Google's your first impression. It's almost like a brand play now and evaluating your SEO maturity. That's 40 minutes of content in like, what, 22 minutes? All right, thank you guys.